Hi everyone. Today we will talk about basic acid-base disturbances. For this last lecture of the chapter, we will consider the causes and the compensatory mechanisms of the common types of acid-base disturbance. Again, I would like to stress, knowledge of acid-base physiology is important in taking care of critically ill patients especially those with underlying respiratory and renal conditions. Let's continue to study the case of Miss Lee. She has watery diarrhea for three days, and the blood test shows severe acidosis. What kind of acidosis does she have, and why does diarrhea cause acidosis? I hope you can figure out the answer when we complete our discussion today. Here are the learning objectives. You are expected to be able to do the following at the end of this discussion. First, define the common acid-base disturbances that affect the human body. Number two, explain the causes and the pathophysiology of these disturbances, and number three, compare the compensatory mechanisms for these common acid-base disturbances. Please note that the normal values for the arterial blood gas parameters may vary slightly. The values we will mention are not fixed you can follow the ones endorsed by your school or hospital. Let's start with a quick discussion on the common types of acid-base disturbances. Using pH as the primary indicator, we would have acidosis if the pH is below 7.35 or alkalosis if the pH is above 7.45. Both acidosis and alkalosis would further be classified as respiratory or metabolic. Let's consider the specific types. First, respiratory acidosis is characterized by low blood pH and high blood carbon dioxide. The primary problem in this type of acidosis is poor ventilation and elimination of carbon dioxide, leading to its retention in the blood and the formation of carbonic acid. Causes include respiratory diseases causing carbon dioxide retention, like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, bone and muscle problems in the chest, like chest trauma, and anything that would depress the respiratory centers in the brain, like drugs. In respiratory acidosis, the body compensates by hemoglobin unloading the bound oxygen to the tissues more easily and increasing generation of bicarbonate from the kidneys. Please note that you must consider the causes of this disturbance and determine which ones could escalate to a medical emergency. The same thing is true for the other types of acid-base disturbances. Let's move to the second one, metabolic acidosis. It is characterized by low blood pH and low blood bicarbonate. The primary problem in metabolic acidosis is an overall decrease in bicarbonate due to excessive use or loss of this ion in the body, for example, severe diarrhea and renal failure. 
Clinically, we often encounter metabolic acidosis in conditions of excessive acid production. For example, lactic acidosis, diabetic ketoacidosis, etc. To compensate for the insufficient bicarbonate ions, breathing becomes more frequent and the kidneys generate more bicarbonate. If the acidosis persists, potassium is released from the intracellular compartment, leading to hyperkalemia, meaning high potassium in the blood. Let's now cross over to respiratory alkalosis. Contrary to respiratory acidosis, Respiratory alkalosis is characterized by high blood pH and low blood carbon dioxide. The primary problem in this condition is increased ventilation and the removal of carbon dioxide, leading to a decrease in formation of hydrogen in the blood and ultimately an increase in the pH. Causes include respiratory diseases, like pulmonary embolism, ARDS, and blood problems like severe anemia. Drugs that stimulate respiratory centers in the brain and other situations like pain, anxiety, panic attacks, and mechanical ventilation. The body tries to compensate this disturbance by increasing renal excretion of bicarbonate and decreasing secretion of hydrogen ions. Please note that respiratory alkalosis could cause more binding of oxygen to hemoglobin. The result is apparently normal oxygen saturation levels but a poor oxygenation of the tissues and the cells. Lastly, let's consider metabolic alkalosis. It is characterized by high blood pH and high blood bicarbonate, just opposite to metabolic acidosis. The primary problem in this condition is an overall increase in bicarbonate due to excessive loss of acids from the body or secondary to treatment. Causes include conditions leading to loss of gastric contents. For example, vomiting due to pyloric stenosis in infants, use of some medications like diuretics and bicarbonate containing drugs. The body tries to compensate by decreasing the rate of breathing and increasing the excretion of bicarbonate. Other compensatory mechanisms are involved depending on the cause of the condition. In metabolic alkalosis, due to excessive vomiting, we also need to correct the associated fluid and electrolyte disorders. Please note that Prolonged metabolic alkalosis is commonly accompanied by hypokalemia, low potassium in the blood, as potassium moves intracellularly. Our discussion so far has focused on the physiologic level of acid-base disturbances. Clinically, however, certain factors must be considered. First, the clinical symptoms and the signs of acid-base disturbances would depend on the underlying disease or condition. It is important to obtain a careful history and perform a thorough physical examination. Then, we can do further laboratory tests like the arterial blood gas, ABG, which can reveal the acid-base status. Acid-base disturbances may not happen as a single entity. When they occur at the same time, we call it mixed or combined acid-base disturbances.
These are common in ICUs with complicated patients. Overall, tests like ABG and electrolytes are repeated frequently for timely management of metabolic disturbances. Now let's come back to the story of Ms. Lee. I'm sure now you know her problem. Yeah, she has metabolic acidosis. It is caused by the significant loss of bicarbonate ions due to prolonged watery diarrhea. In summary, acid-based disturbances develop because of imbalances in hydrogen and bicarbonate concentrations. The lungs, kidneys, and the brain all work together to compensate for acid-based disturbances. However, correction or restoration of acid-based balance may not be complete. When investigating acid-based disturbance, in-depth clinical correlation is vital. Now we have finished the discussion on fluid, electrolytes, and acid-based balance. We encourage you to read more about how they affect the functions of the body. And that's all for this chapter. Here's the list of the references. You can post your questions and send us comments at the discussion forum. See you again in my next session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.